India has landed a spacecraft near the lunar south pole for the first time. Chandrayaan-3 is testing a possible site there for future lunar stations. This joins a lineup of four countries that may soon establish human presences on the moon. What has Chandrayaan-3 discovered there now, and what impact will it have on future lunar missions? Chandrayaan-3 and the Moon's South Pole On July 15, 2023, India's Chandrayaan-3 mission got underway. The destination of the two rovers, Vikram and Pragyan, is the lunar south pole of the Earth's satellite. Did you know that this region, of all places, can be of utmost importance for future settlers? Large water deposits can provide humans with fresh water, oxygen, and fuel. In craters, where hardly any light penetrates, water has been present as ice for centuries. Chandrayaan-3 aims to study the lunar environment and resources around the South Pole and to investigate the temperature profile and chemical composition of the lunar rocks. The South Pole region can be valuable, but it's also challenging, with temperatures varying from negative 150 degrees to plus 120 degrees Celsius, depending on depth and time of day. The stationary lander Vikram will take the temperature measurements, while the small rover Pragyan will go on exploration tours. After big failure, success at last. Chandrayaan-3 is India's third lunar mission and the first to land near the South Pole. Chandrayaan means lunar vehicle in Sanskrit, India's ancient language. The mission is part of India's ambitious space program, which began in 1962 with the launch of a first rocket. At that time, the rocket launched from a simple and remote fishing village. Today, India already has facilities that can rival NASA's large launch pads. In the 1960s, hardly anyone took notice of India as a space nation. The world eagerly followed the ambitious space race of the United States and the Soviet Union. India humbly carried on with its space project. The nation has since launched many satellites, rockets, and probes into space, and slowly has become one of the world's leading spacefaring nations. By the time India's first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1, was launched in 2008, the attention was already elevated. People around the world took note of India's lunar orbiter. In particular, the Moon Impact Probe generated interest because this probe crashed directly into the Moon. The impact allowed scientists to measure data and evidence of trace water molecules. Chandrayaan-2 launched in 2019, and at that time, a lander named Vikram and a rover named Pragyan already traveled to the Moon. The orbiter that carried them is still orbiting the Moon, but the mission did not end well for the lander and the rover. The two had an accident while descending to the lunar surface. The shock was great, but India's ambition was even greater. India did not give up its dream of landing at the South Pole, and shortly thereafter, another lander named Vikram and a rover named Pragyan set out on their journey as part of Chandrayaan-3. Both machines were almost exact replicas of the two brake pilots, with only a few minor improvements. A replica of the Chandrayaan-2 lander and rover, Chandrayaan-3 was launched from India's Satish Dhawan Space Center on July 15, 2023, and successfully poured into lunar orbit about a month later. On August 20, 2023, the lander-rover pair began the risky final descent to the South Pole region. Some people in India may have been sweating during the landing, but this time there was great jubilation. Vikram and Pragyan had landed successfully. The South Pole region is challenging and risky for such landings. Because of its location, signals from Earth can only be transmitted with a communication delay of about three seconds. This is too much to safely land probes with control from Earth. Chandrayaan-3 was on its own, relying entirely on its own onboard computers and sensors. The landing site was a risk, a barely explored region of which there was no detailed map. India showed courage in allowing the $2 million instruments to descend there. But the Indian spacewalkers were sure of their cause despite the failure of Chandrayaan-2. Chandrayaan-3 is equipped with a highly intelligent navigation system. A camera and a radar scanned the terrain on approach. Every rock and crater was sighted and their flight path was adjusted to each obstacle. This fully automated landing navigation system is a masterpiece of engineering and received international acclaim. The little sunlight in the south polar region of the Moon is the next challenge the mission must cope with. Chandrayaan-3 are equipped with their own batteries and solar cells for this purpose. 
Shortly after landing on August 20th, 2023, Vikram sent a first image of the moon's far side, and it set down its small rover. Vikram was named after the pioneer of Indian space travel. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was the founder of the Indian Space Agency and an astronomer, nuclear physicist, and visionary extraordinaire. Pragyan is Sanskrit for wisdom. Together, the two will study the South Pole for at least six months. Vikram's Mission Objectives Chandrayaan-3 has two main objectives. To advance India's soft landing capability for space probes and to conduct scientific experiments to explore the South Pole. Chandrayaan-3 has a total of 14 pieces of technical equipment, cameras, and other gimmicks to measure various aspects of the lunar surface and underworld. One of the most important instruments aboard the lander is chastity. Short, for Chandra's surface thermophysical experiment, chastity is a device that uses a rod-shaped probe that can drill up to 10 centimeters into lunar dust and then measure temperatures as well as mineral components. Chastity is a first. Never before has a similar instrument been used on the moon or on Mars. It's not only in India that people are eager to see how this experiment will go. Researchers worldwide will benefit from the findings of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Temperatures at depth are expected to range from 10 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius. The data collected by Chastity will help estimate how deep water is buried beneath the dust and the effort settlers would have to make to harness those water supplies. Another important instrument aboard Vikram is the Lunar Retro Reflector Array LRA. This device has eight mirrors that can reflect laser beams. It can be used to measure the distances of objects on the moon. But LRA can do something else. The device is suitable for measuring the exact distance between the lunar pole and Earth. Vikram's measurements are expected to yield the most accurate data ever, and incidentally, the results are expected to confirm Einstein's theory of general relativity. Some of the predictions of the theory concern the way massive objects bend space and time around them. The Earth curves space more than the Moon because of its weight. Nevertheless, the Moon's weight must also have some influence on the Earth's gravitational pull. The accurate measurements provide an opportunity to test some of these predictions. Pragyan's Mission Goals The rover Pragyan will use the Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, APXS, to analyze the chemical composition of lunar rocks and soil. To do this, the rover will steer over the lunar surface at a speed of one centimeter per second, looking for the best spots to explore. Using a concentrated beam of alpha particles and X-rays, minerals and elements in the environment become measurable, and Pragyan can even create maps of the exact distribution and formation of minerals and rocks. The LIBS instrument is a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. It's a device that can vaporize a small amount of lunar material by using a powerful laser beam. The material is heated so that it emits light, and these light beams tell the spectrometer precise proportions of elements and minerals, and can even reveal the isotopic ratios of various elements. First Images of Chandrayaan-3 The Indian Space Agency has already shared the first exciting results. Images and videos shared on Twitter show Chandrayaan-3 landing, the rover rolling out of Vikram's belly, first test drives, and the Indian Space Agency shared first measurement results. Vikram and Pragyan were successfully deployed for a few days in late August and early September, and then the lunar night fell. The lander and rover can only operate for one lunar day at a time. Then the light says goodbye, and night falls for 14 days. After the long moon night, the moon day, which also lasts 14 days, begins. Imagine once you are moon settlers and must live with the fact that the day lasts 14 Earth days and the night just as long. How would you feel about that? Let us know in the comments. The lander and rover certainly don't have a biological clock that gets messed up. However, these two also have to adjust to the moon and go into standby mode during the lunar night. Then, when it gets light again, the two begin drilling into the ground once more, measuring temperatures and seismic activity, analyzing samples, and exploring new locations. All the while, the lander and rover communicate with the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, which then sends data to the Indian Space Agency's Mission Control Center in Bengaluru. The orbiter will continue to orbit the moon for at least another seven years, but whether Chandrayaan-3 
will be in service that long is questionable. The lander and rover are exposed to violent influences from large temperature fluctuations and lunar dust on the lunar surface. Both probes are equipped with highly sensitive technical measuring units, as well as an internal cleaning system. In particular, the solar panels and camera lenses must be constantly cleaned of fine lunar dust. How long the mission will last is an open question. In India, people are happy about every day that Chandrayaan-3 is in operation. A milestone for India's space program. Chandrayaan-3 is already a resounding success for India. The mission will not only advance national science. Vikram and Pragyan's new impressions of the moon are a source of inspiration for all of us. Chandrayaan-3 will open important knowledge about new possibilities and opportunities for future lunar missions. It is desirable that all nations currently present on the moon will find peaceful cooperation and perhaps in the future, resource sharing. India is close to NASA and ESA and has shown openness to joint missions in the future. Will this make the moon the center of Earth peace? We'll see. Other nations with a presence on the moon include China and Russia. The Chinese are currently exploring the far side of the moon, which is still largely unknown. The Russian lunar program currently has an orbiter in lunar orbit, and by 2040, the Russians would also like to establish their own space station on the moon. India's plans for a space station are currently still up in the air. Initially, Chandrayaan-4 is scheduled to launch in 2025 and bring lunar material from the South Pole region back to Earth for further analysis. If you want to see more exciting videos, press subscribe now.